Good morning from Florida. As today, this may be a two-parter, 14 pages I have here on Ash Wednesday in Lent. I want to hurry and get this out for our Ash Wednesday crowds out there and Christians who, who don't understand history, who don't read their Bible and just blindly go into doing things religiously. And we're going to look at the Bible. But I'm going to give a forewarning as I do this wet cloth series. Anything involved the Catholic Church that the Catholic Church is doing is anti-Bible. They are not a Bible source. They will tell you they are in tradition. And when tradition conflicts the Bible, tradition has the role in the Catholic life. They will have you to read a missal instead of the Bible. And I've, I have had a few times where I have actually seen a Catholic get into the Bible and got saved. And that's not what the church would want you to do. Because then you would see the pagan. You would see the devilish. In, and you would get out of that church and get to a Bible-believing church. And they would lose their money and funds. Now, the wet cloth on that, uh, Nash Wednesday, which leads to Lent, I mean, he said, well, what on earth is a wet cloth? My grandma, anything got spilled, anything that got dumped on the ground, anything that got a, she always say, get a wet cloth, and it'll clean it up. So for my grandma puke is, that wet cloth, it'll clean it up. That's what this series is. Let's get a wet cloth, and let's clean this up. Let's clean up our lives for Jesus Christ. If the Bible says do it, then let's do it. If the Bible says not do it, then let's clean it up and let's get right. Let's get clean. Okay. Ash Wednesday opens Lent. A season, a season of fasting and prayer. Ash Wednesday takes place 46 days before Easter Sunday. Okay, Easter. That's not Christian. And when we do this study, we're going to repeat things over and over because I want you to get in your mindset of what this is. In Acts, there's, there's mention the same chapter. There's Easter and there's Passover. Now, Christians are not called to, to celebrate the Passover, but Jesus Christ is the Passover lamb, the lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. If you were to choose a Bible holiday, if you're saying, listen, you must celebrate Easter, you must celebrate Passover, I take Passover. I'm not going to celebrate Esther Sunday. The, the image, the God that has many breasts and you go searching for eggs. I won't do that. It is primarily observed by Catholics. Okay, so here we go. Now, I don't need, have, should have to do this 14-page report. But there are Christians out there, oh, what's wrong with your religion is better than my religion? What's wrong with them? Oh, I've got friends and, I, and I, blah, 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 my family. You haven't read the proper books. You have not studied the proper history. Although many other Christians observe it too. So there's the problem. The Catholic Church claims. Ash Wednesday comes from the ancient Jewish tradition. Tradition. That's on their website. Tradition. Of penance and fasting. The practice includes of wearing ashes on the head. All right, yes. Jewish people had penance and they had fasting. And they put ashes on the head. They, they, they put themselves in sackcloth and they put ashes on their head. Yes, that's in the Bible. But they did not make it a form of a cross. And they didn't do it just Wednesdays. And we'll get into the gods, small G-O-D-S worship. The ash symbolizes the dust from which God made us. True, but it also can utter destruction. What do you do when you burn a wood? What's left over? Ashes. The, as the priest applies the ashes to the person's forehead, you mean like David applied the rock to Goliath's forehead? You mean like the mark that's going to be in the tribulation that you can receive in your right hand or your forehead, 666, the mark of the beast? 
You mean where the third eye is located? Uh, there might be two or three to study. He speaks the word. Remember thou art dust. And to dust shall return. Chapter and verse of all this nonsense. Show me in the Bible where a priest. In the Bible. Walks up to you. Puts dust on your forehead. Or ashes or whatever he puts on there. And remember that thou art dust. Show me in the Bible. Chapter and verse please. I'll be perfectly happy. And so what we have the foundation of a church here, the Catholic Church, of putting a little black spot in your head. We have the foundation of churches throughout America in the world, I've seen, of face painting. Is it not face painting to put that black mark on your head? And you just, you know, the, the Baptist Church finished it with an elephant, an Easter, you know, colored face, a rabbit, or whatever you're doing. So let's look at some Bible verses here. That I have put down. Exodus 8.16. The Lord said to Moses. Say unto Aaron. Stretch out thy rod. And smite the dust of the land. That it may become lice. Throughout all Egypt. You know where lice are? They're in your head. Exodus 9.9. And shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt. That will come up later. And shall be boiled. Breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beasts. Throughout all the land of Egypt. Numbers 5.17 And the priest shall take holy water in earthen vessel and on the dust of the floor of the tabernacle the priest shall take and put it into water. You know what the contents of Numbers chapter 5 you want to read? A man thinks his wife has committed adultery. And he brings her to the tabernacle, brings her to the priest. He makes her drink of this water that the dust of the tabernacle floor is mixed in with the water. And if she has been unfaithful to her husband, her belly starts rotting. Her thigh starts rotting. It's a great place for Nash. Have the priest quote that one. It's even got holy water. And we're going to see that again later. Holy water. Deuteron <coughs> Excuse me. Deuteronomy 9.21. And I took your sin, the calf, which you made. You know, Aaron made a golden calf, golden arches, and burnt it with fire and stamped it and ground it is very small, even until it was small as dust. Moses took that idol, that imagery like the Catholic Church has, and he ground it to dust. And then he threw it in a water, nearby water system. Oh, another relic to water. Gee, water keeps showing up. Deuteronomy 9.21. I took you. Oh, wait, I read that. Let's get it. Deuteronomy 8.24. <clears throat> the Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. That's the judgment of God. I'm not going to make it rain. And you're going to have the great dust ball. It's going to be nothing but dust. <clears throat> Joshua 7.6. Seven, Joshua seven, Here we go. Joshua rent his clothes and fell on the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord at even time. He and the elders, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust on their heads. They didn't make a mark, but I bet you the Catholic Church would think that you know that they made a cross even long before the cross meant anything. <laughs> First Kings eighteen thirty eight. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stone and the dust. Here, Elijah has that great offering to the prophets of Baal, which lose because their God didn't call, call upon and strike the fire of their sacrifice. God's fire came down, licked up the dust and water. Ooh, water keeps showing up. Job 2.12, and when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept. They rent everyone his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. Sprinkle. Hey, Catholic Church, as much as you sprinkle water at baptism, why don't you just sprinkle the dust like you do baptism? <laughs> no, you take the finger. So Job is not what the Catholic Church does. Job 10.9. Remember, I beseech you that thou... Has made me as clay and will bring me into dust again. Okay, there it is. There it is. We're going back to dust. 
Lamentations 2.10, the elders of the daughter of Zion sit on the ground and keep silence. They have cast upon dust upon their heads. Uh, you know, they're throwing it up there. This is after the city of Judah has been destroyed by Babylon. It's a time of sorrow because of their sins, yes. Their city has been destroyed. They are not repenting of what has happened. No sooner when, when Nebuchadnezzar sets up the golden image, there's only three Hebrew boys that are doing right. Amos 2.7 They pant after dust of the earth with the head of the poor and turn aside away the meek. And the man and his father will go into the same maid to profane my holy name. Put that context into the Ash Wednesday. That probably happens on Mardi Gras. That's going to come up. You know, down here in Louisiana with Mardi, with the Mardi Gras and all that, you go down to, the, to that wicked place, they'll be hanging out, they rest. Celebration of Easter, I guess. <laughs> oh, style it, shut up. Hey, there you go. That's so just, I said something that even dawned to me. Why do the women in, in Louisiana, New Orleans, hang out their breasts on Mardi Gras? Because you're preparing 46 days to the booby god. The breast god. Wow, that's interesting. Oh, Revelation 18, 19. And they shall cast dust on their heads and cry, weep and wail, and say, Alas, alas, the great city, Babylon, which made me rich of all that had ships in the seas, reason to cause it. And for in one hour she's made desolate. The great Babylon, great mystery Babylon, the one of the Antichrist, the city of Satan, will be destroyed. They'll be throwing dust in their head. Must be Ash Wednesday. Must be going. The city must be destroyed on Ash Wednesday. I'm just tongue in cheek, sarcasm. I'm not giving a date. Ashes also symbolize grief, as we saw in Lamentations. Grief that have that we have sinned and caused separation from God. You really think any Catholic cares what they get do against God? You really think so? You ever see how a Catholic treats a Christian preaching the gospel? I guess he goes to his telephone booth. First John 1 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I gotta throw the Bible in there, you know, in this mess. Because you don't see much Bible. When I did this study, very limited Bible the Catholic Church gave. Priest administrator ashes with administrator ashes during Mass. And all are invited to accept the ashes as a visible symbol of penance. We'll get into that moment. Even non-Christians and the excluded from the church are welcome to receive ashes. There you go. Well, wait a minute. What gives an idea of non-Christians? So you see, the Catholic Church thinks they're the Christian of all Christians. That set through Mother Church you're and Peter, you're not going to heaven. You know, when Peter sits at the pearly gates, I resent that remark. Because I am just as much as a Christian born under the blood of Jesus Christ and that he died and suffered. According to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day. According to the scriptures, I don't believe in any pope. I don't believe in any cardinal and any bird brain of the Catholic Church. Ashes are made from blessed palm branches taken from the previous year's Palm Sunday Mass. Mass. It teaches in a thorough consecration by an ordained priest. The bread and wine become the sacrificial body. Become the sacrificial body, blood and soul and divinity of Jesus Christ as he sacrificed on Calvary made truly present once again on the altar. You know what that mess said? That is the Catholic Church definition I pulled out. They believe when you eat that wafer and you drink that, that juice, that is the literal Jesus Christ. And you go to Revelation chapter 12 where the dragon is trying to eat that Jewish child. 
They believe literally, and you go ask your priest who is called father, that dresses like mother, who's not married, who's having an affair with altar boys. You ask them, is that Jesus Christ? You check your catechism. Is that Jesus Christ? And they will say, yes, it is. That's cannibalism. That's right. Africa and the Catholic Church are very much... There are cannibalism going on in Africa, and there's cannibalism going on in every mass. The mass is a mess. I partake of no mass for my salvation. And when I have the Lord's Supper, it's a wheat unleavened wafer that is a wheat unleavened wafer. And I drink, partake of purest grape juice. It is not nothing but a wafer and grape juice. I don't blaspheme God by the mass. And in order for the church, you have to partake the, the mass of the devil to go to heaven. All right? So, <clears throat> they have a Palm Sunday mass, you know, a celebration of Palm. They also have a Christ mass, in which Christ was never in the mass, so don't try to put him back in something he never was. Christians do that. And Baptist churches, they do that. Jesus is the reason for the season, and you don't know your history. You're blinded by the devil. Open your Bible. It's important to remember that Ash Wednesday is a day of repentant prayer and fasting. Some faithful take the rest of the day off and remain home. It is generally unfitted to dine out, to shop, or to go into a public after receiving the ashes. Fasting is highly in, in, in fasting. Feasting. Oh, excuse me. Feasting is highly inappropriate. There's, there's no celebration for the mass. Small children, the elderly, and sick are exempt from this observance. Ashes. That's, we don't want the little children getting involved. We don't want the little children to learn how to, how to repent and get right. We don't want the elderly. They're, they're too old. Ashes are a symbol of penance made sacramental. That's another Catholic word that means you must do in order to get to heaven. I'll tell you what I'll tell you what the Bible word is to get to heaven. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's it. No mass, no marriage, no other hoopla. That that dying thief that repented to Jesus Christ did not have time to come off the cross and go to the mass. He did not have time to come off that cross and baptize. And Jesus said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. You got you to gotta go with the scriptures, my friend. The sacramental by blessing of the church. And they help us develop the spirit of humility and sacrifice. What is the sacrament? It's a religious ceremony or ritual regarding the imparting, imparting, imparting divine grace, such as baptism, the Eucharist, and in the Roman Catholic or many Orthodox churches, penance and anointing of the sick. So in order to get grace, you've got to do in the church the sacraments. <laughs> How's that sound? Okay. Hogwash. And if you don't die without a priest to give you a last rites, that baloney. Christ is with old, always with me. The ashes are made from the blessed palms. Blessed palms. Blessed means happy. You know, uh, when Leah had her, had her son, she said, oh, they shall call me blessed, and I named them Asher because it means happy. You ever seen a happy palm? Only Bob Ross says we have happy palms. Maybe that's where he comes. Use on Palm Sunday celebration in the previous year. Man, they keep their palms like they keep their Christmas trees. The ashes are Christian. Christian. I can't say Christianized with holy water. What did I tell you? Did I tell you that's coming? Did I tell you? You know what the holy water was? It was back there in Romans, a number, excuse me, back there in Numbers where that guy brought his wife to the priest and said, I don't think my wife has been faithful. And they took holy water and they took the dust. 
That would be. And do you know what, what woman adulterizes herself with the world? The mother church. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. That church is going to rot, Revelation. Where was I? Holy water and sent it to exposure to incense. While the ashes symbolize penance and remorse, they also remind that God is gracious, merciful to those who call upon him with repented hearts. Again, the holy water. Leviticus 16, 24. And he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place. It's not holy water. There's a holy place. And they go up to that raise and labor and they wash themselves. And Numbers 5, 17. Here we go again. And the priest shall take holy water. There it is. An earthen vessel and the dust that's on the floor of the tabernacle of the priest shall take and put it into the water. When your priest goes to put that thing on your forehead, read to him Numbers 5, 17. It's not mentioned in the Bible, Lent or Ash Wednesday. None of the apostles observed it. So, Christian, what do you think so far? Page number four. What do you think? Nowhere are Christians commanded to keep it. But the Catholic Church says the Christians must do it. They are not a Christian church. They are of the devil and Satan and Lucifer. Ooh, that's pretty broad. How many stuff have I done in the Catholic Church has been a violation of the Bible, of hymns and holidays and acts of the church? <clears throat> it was not, going back to this Ash Wednesday, it was not even officially practiced until a thousand years after Christ's resurrection. Now, we're going to read the Catholics say, oh, the apostles did it. But it did not show up onto the records to a thousand years. Show me a thousand-year-old apostle. I'll show you baloney in a dinosaur museum. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like so many other non-biblical Christian customs, it has pagan roots. Ooh, here we go. It is a sad fact that modern Christianity has taken so many customs from the practice of the heathens that one might wonder if we should still call it Christianity. Ooh. Oh, I'll give you a little time to get up from that one. Oh, oh, that hurt. Ow. Oh, this ritual in, in position of the ashes is supposedly the, an imitation of the regretful act of covering oneself in dust and ashes. The marking, the marking of the believers of Ash on Wednesday is done in combination of other extra biblical, extra biblical, in other words, it's outside the Bible, routine called Lent. You can't find Lent and you can't find Ash Wednesday in the Bible. And we'll get into why you can't, especially Wednesday. We're going to go into a little study of Wednesday. Despite Christ's command of, to his followers, to abstain from the practice of disfiguring their faces during the fasting it has become a regular practice. See, there are people, and I, I know one, a boss, man, when he got his ashes on Wednesday, he walk all around. He go to work and he wear his ashes all day. And you'll see people. Last year, we, we saw, it didn't dawn on me right away that what was going on. I have to make up this Wednesday and go to Walmart and start go harassing the people with the you know, like I do with the people that ding, 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 Salvation Army. <laughs> but let's see what Matthew 6, 16. Let's look at the Bible, shall we? Matthew 6, 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces. What is that ash? It disfigures their face. Look, I'm a Catholic. And I don't know how to wash my face. Or I smacked into something and didn't know it. Or I started to get a face painting and it didn't finish. That they may appear unto men to fast. So see, the Ash Wednesday that Mark said, look, I'm a Catholic. I'm fasting. It's Lent. Look at me. It's Ash Wednesday. And Jesus said, don't do it. 
You're a hypocrite. So when you see somebody Wednesday and Ash Wednesday, and they got the cross, they got the Ash, you walk up to them and say, hypocrite. Oh, I'm Catholic. Ash Wednesday. Jesus said you're a hypocrite. Matthew 6, 16. And read it to them. I might put that on an index card, go around looking for people who had that, uh, and walk up to them and say, you're a hypocrite. And then read to them Mac, Mac, uh, Matthew 6, 16. I may, I may, I don't know. I don't know why I had planned for Wednesday. You got a busy week. Despite Christ's command to, to his followers to abstain from the practice of disfiguring their faces during, during the fasting, again, Matthew 6, 16. He said, don't do it. And the church says, do it. And if you were to go up to your priest, say, uh, I won't call him father. Matthew 6, because the Bible says, call no man your father. So Matthew 6, 16, and you call your that guy your father. You've gone against the word of Jesus twice. And you go up to your priest, say, Matthew 16, 16 says, we're not supposed to do that. Well, tradition says, I'm a hot dog. Get more of a hot dog than I do with the baloney of the Catholic Church. The practice of putting ashes on one's forehead has been known from ancient times. In the Nord Nordic pagan religion, placing ashes above one's brow was believed to ensure the protection of the Norse god Odin. Odin. Apologize to Odin if I said his name wrong. This practice spread to Europe during the Viking Congress. This laying of ashes was done on Wednesday, the day named for Odin, Odin's Day. Ash Wednesday has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It has to do with Odin, the Viking God, on his day, Wednesday, just as much as Christmas has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. The 25th. Interesting enough, according to was it Wikipedia? I don't know how to say that. One of Odin's names is uh, I'm gonna spell it. Y G G. I don't know how they pronounce it. The same is the Norse word for wait, a minute, the same is Norse for the world ash. I I, I copied this so reading this it is. This name, YGG, closely resembles the Vedic name Agni in pronunciation. So YGG means world ash. On Wednesday, for Olden, Catholics have on Wednesday a thing of ash that does not come from the Bible. Though there is a, a shadow of Bible, as the Jewish people would lament, and they would put ashes upon them, but their particular day and the particular way of worshiping is that of small G-O-D-S of the Vikings. Kind of interesting. It's, it's almost interesting how it's almost spelt like egg, and 46 days later from this, you're going to have Easter eggs. The Norse practice, which was become known as Ash Wednesday, was itself drawn from the Vedic Indian religion. Ashes were believed to be the seed of Agni. We're into sex worship now. And this sex worship is carried over to Easter when you have your little boys and girls searching for eggs as sperm searches for an egg with an idol of Esther who's got her boobies hanging out. I'm trying to be clean, but I'm trying to be right. And the booby god of Esther, she's the milk of all life of spring that wakes up de the dead to bring life. It is from the name that the Latins use for fire, ignis. It's also the root word of the English language that we got our words ignite, ignition. Agni was said to have the authority to forgive sins. Was not Ash Wednesday a sacrament to impute to you grace? That comes from the Indian worship. It comes from the 
Viking worship. It does not come from the Bible. Ashes were also believed to be symbolic for purifying blood of the Vedic god Shiva, which is said to have power to cleanse sins. So we have seen Ash Wednesday now. It is not, it's not a Bible doctrine of the Jewish Jesus or the apostles. It has not been recognized by the apostles. It is not recognized in the New Testament writings. But it has a root of the Vikings and of the Indian. Now we look at Lent and we're going to go back and forth. Lent is a 40 days preceding the observance of Esther, I mean Easter. Where the observers are expected to fast or cease from having the use of some other luxury, and that's in <laughs> like the majority of modern so called Christian practices, its beginnings can be traced to heathen practices. Oh, <gasps> no. Uh, in an early 19th century German explorer, Alexander von Humboldt, Noted the practice among pagans in Mexico. You know, that's where we're trying to build the wall against. Being held in the spring, his account states, three days after the vernal equinox, began a solemn fast of 40 days in honor of the sun. You would be great to read uh, his ups. Mystery Babylon, if you can read it. A Lent of 40 days was also honored in Egypt. According to and by English scholar John Landseer, in his Sabine's researches, 1823, an Egyptian Lent of 40 days was held in honor of Osiris. This mess is not Christian, but it belongs to the satanic Christian of the Catholic Church. There is a spiritual signature which bears witness to the spirit of these traditions. It's called Fat Tuesday, Shroud Tuesday, or Mardi Gras. It is a custom of living it up to get all your fill of all your enjoyment the world has to offer before setting off to church in mock repentance of Ash Wednesday. Such celebrations are indicating the spirit behind its disguise. Mark 7:7. 7, 7, How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching of doctrines that teaching of the doctrines of the commandments of men. 1 Peter 1, 13 to 16. Wherefore gird up your loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashion yourself according to the former lusts of your ignorance, but as which ye have called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it's written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. But let's have one period of time. Let's live it up. So are wild oaks. Roman Catholic, Anglican, and some other churches hold special services at which worshippers are marked with ashes as a symbol of death and sorrow for sin. So you're preparing the people to get the mark of the 666. Ah, heck, don't put it on my arm. Put it right here so all the world can see. I'm a faithful Catholic. See that on Wednesdays? I'm a faithful worshipper to, to Satan and the Antichrist. See the mark right there? That's where the store, you know, you're supposed to scan your hand at the store, all right? But now they have that little special wand that you can shoot each other with. You can scan your forehead, I guess. The church, the Christian churches that served Lent in the 21st century, and not all do it knowingly, use it as a time for prayer and penance. Only a small number of people today fast for the whole of Lent. 
although some maintain the practice on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. It's more common these days for believers to surrender to particular vice, such as favorite foods or smoking, BBC, British Broadcasts. Various Bible events and customs are referred to by those who celebrate the days. these days. The Bible mentions people mourning in sackcloth and ashes. The Bible also talks about repentance and fasting. And the number 40 is projecting in various Bible events. 40 is a Bible number that means testing. Ezekiel 8, 14. And this verse is going to come up many times. Then he brought me to the door, the gates of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Tammuz has come into the land. No, Tammuz is the reason for the season. There you go. You can say I quoted that. Tammuz is the reason for the season, not Jesus Christ. Some have suggested Lent may be connected to early pagan holidays. No, really? In Ezekiel 8, 14, the prophet in a vision saw women weeping for the pagan god Tammuz. It has been suggested by some scholars that the practice of weeping for Tammuz was an actual origin of Lent. And the Bible Catholic 40-day period of, of abstinence prayer to Estar, Estar, starting after Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday, and Ash Wednesday. So even the scholars are saying, this is in, to Tammuz crying. Poor Tammuz died. Consider that the name Easter itself is derived from Estar, don't say Easter, say Estar. The ancient Babylonian fertility goddess and Tammuz's mother. You didn't know that, did you? So when you celebrate Tammuz's death and crying and weeping, the next great holiday is the holiday for his mother, Estar. Show this to your pastor of your church. Say, Pastor, I want you to watch this video. Watch it entirely. Explain to us why you have not taught the congregation this. The Bible does teach the importance of fasting and self-examination, but it does not teach a 40-day period called Lent or Ash Wednesday of putting ashes on the forehead. And there's no practice. Ezekiel 9, 1 through 8. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that had charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which leadeth toward the known, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. One man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's ink cord by his side. They went in, and stood behind, beside the brazen altar. They're in the tabernacle, in the temple. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, the most holy place, wherewith he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had a writer's ink cord by his side. The Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the... Uh-oh abominations that are be done in the midst of thee thereof and to others he said in my hearing go ye after him through the city smite and let your eye, let not your eyes spare neither have pity slay utterly old and young both maids and little children women but come not any man upon the mark begin in my sanctuary now the story in ezekiel is the city of the, the children of Judah have sinned against God terribly. God is angry. And God sent forth this man to go mark the foreheads of those who are doing right. And those who have not done right, he orders his army to go and kill all those that don't have the mark. Would this not be great for a great republic government of a church that has its own capital, that has its own kind of president, has their own money, has their own armor, has their own 
uh, postal service. Wouldn't it be great? Oh, on Wednesday, if they have a mark, leave them alone. If they don't have a mark, kill them. That would be taken completely out of context of Ezekiel for a Gentile church on this side of Calvary to be doing it. It's a self of identification as the imitation mark of the Antichrist is. If they have a mark, they're for us. If they don't, they're for God. Kill them. The church is getting you ready for Antichrist. Ash Wednesday has a non-Christian organ. Or, origin and it's, it's accepted the beliefs of the Catholic Church at the Council of Nicaea 325 AD the council also said that upon the 40 day fast period as a standard length to celebrate Lent during this time period the goal of Constantine the emperor the, the founder of the Catholic Church was to combine pagans and Christians into a peaceable unit Within the Roman kingdom. So let's get everybody to go. The ecumenical unit of 325 AD. And how will we get all the churches again? We will put all the customs into the church. So everybody will have their own day. So thus when you walk into Baptist churches across the world. They will have a Christmas tree. They will decorate their, their church with lights of the season. They will have Easter egg hunts for those who like Easter. They have been married into the church. The church that God speaks about has committed adultery in the book of Revelation. And here it is. If that church does it, we can do it. What's the Bible say about it? Oh, get that Bible out of here. We, we have our own Bible. Yes, my friend, the church today has entered into the religion of Judaism before Babylon came. And you will find the great queen of heaven and her cakes. You will find the man that had his own priest called the father and his own images that were stolen by the tribe of Dan. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut off right here. We're going to have to go into a part two. Hopefully you can stomach this mess. Hopefully you're learning enough that if you are partaking of this, you are seeing that, oh, he's mean and nasty and ugly. But he's right. He's scriptural right. He's historically right. He is, wow, my church is wrong. And God is right. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's no other nonsense for salvation. Not of works, least any man boast. So we'd have to do a part two.